Oops, didn't mean to record to the cloud, but so be it. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and I would like to welcome everybody to the Wise Crowds Design Call. Um, what we're going to do, like we do most day Mondays, is we're going to do this Wise Crowd structure, which um, is going to invite us to give and get help on some on a design brief that we will have. Um, Wise Crowds is a pretty straightforward structure. We're going to try and use tidy time boxes because I have to practice. Um, and what that means is we're going to take just two minutes to share. Somebody's going to take just two minutes to share a help request, a design brief. And then we, as the wise crowd, are going to play the role of consultant and take just three minutes to answer, to ask any clarifying questions that our client uh, will answer. Uh, after that round of clarifying questions, we'll then take eight minutes and our client will sort of leave the call by muting themselves and turning off their webcam. Um, and... Um, we as consultants will consult. We'll generate some form of advice, typically focusing on what liberating structures come to mind to help the client address their design brief. And after eight minutes, the client will come back and share their, uh, their takeaways, basically what they found helpful, insightful, completely useless, or, you know, or some point in between uh, regarding our consultation. And then we'll rotate if in a new client and uh, work on any design briefs that are left in the room until basically until we run out of time or we run out of design briefs. So um, I know I kind of rushed through that. Is there anyone for whom that structure is not clear that needs some clarification on how we're gonna go about this wise crowds thing? It's not really clear, but I figure that I can't mess it up. So, <laughs> or can I? <laughs> that, this, this is true. This is great. Um, I will take that um, and run with it. So, <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, we'll, figure same it out. we'll figure it out as we go. Um, so, the first question is Does anybody have a design brief for us to work on? Would my question that I asked earlier, could that be a design brief? I've never been here, so. Definitely, it sounded like a design brief. Philip was oh, okay. already well, working in the one. group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was already, he was, he was ready to pull you in here. So um, for sure, Brigitte, uh, Brigitte uh, that your question sounds like a great design brief for us to work on. So if you can, uh, if you don't mind reprising yourself, for All right. anybody who wasn't in the call at that point, tell us about your situation. I work with a big uh, governmental organization, uh, about 30,000 people, just to give a little bit of context. And we have to solve an issue. It involves a lot of stakeholders, a lot of different departments. We, we are starting with just two and trying to expand as we go. Um, so we're four people now. We want to make a roadmap of how to approach this problem, the first things we want to achieve. But all four of us, we don't know each other very well. Uh, we all have different background and experience and knowledge about the thing we're trying to solve. And we all tend to go into the detail, which is not very helpful if you're trying to make a roadmap. <laughs> So we're trying to, we are in a phase, what are we going, what do we want to achieve in the end, like the big thing? And then what are we going to do? I don't know, this quarter. But first also a little bit the horizon. This is what we want to achieve in the end with all the stakeholders, which are a lot. And where do we going to start? But we tend to go in, somebody say, oh, we have to solve this. And then you, we all go into detail. Well. That's what's happening. So what is a useful structure or a useful exercise um, to get everybody on board for the same long-term vision, for the same roadmap? Awesome. 
That sounds for sure like a, a design brief. Um, clarifying questions. Uh, could you could you tell us what's at stake? What is the thing that you're trying to do? We, well, 30,000 people, a lot of different departments and within departments, we're a lot of different teams. Um, a big uh, IT landscape of different systems and every system has data in it. And we want to use the data um, be available for everyone. Well, that, that is not a problem. It is available for the people who need to use it, but with exactly the same meaning. So if a data field is like a date, then what does that date mean? Is it the date uh, you got a call? Is it the date you sent an answer? Is it the date that, well, anything? Eh? Is it the date somebody objected? Um, you want to, it's just an example. You want to have the same meaning of the date in all of the organization. So that is one of the things we want to achieve. But also because there's so many, uh, yeah, well, like, I don't know, 400 different sources of systems with data. Um, and the knowledge about the data is, well, um, compartmentalized, you could say. How can we, at the end users, the people who do data analysis, how can they ask their questions if they have a question about the data in this field of 400 systems of data and 400 user groups who designed the system? and have knowledge about this data and are, well, it's all, I, uh, they're all small islands, basically, um, all these systems. So we're trying to achieve um, availability of the data models and the meaning of the data and having a way to ask questions about them to people who are, um, well, the experts, on it, on the subject. Um, uh, so my question would be like the, the four persons, do they all work for that government organization or yeah, yeah. Are, they, we're all, are they, yes. We're all internal, yes. So and we in have, the same department? Any... Sorry? In the same department? No, two departments. Two departments. So and we're already is... two stakeholders, yeah. Okay, and from your department, you're the only one? No, it's two from my department and two from another department. Okay, and just um, what's the frequency of your meetings or what's uh, like, what are- Well, we start uh, coming Thursday and then we'll, we will be meeting weekly until uh, Christmas holiday. That's just, and then depending on where we start, we decide on frequency of meeting after that. You guys have a deadline. No. There's not a management or somebody high up who has given us a deadline. No. Is there somebody higher up that knows uh, what you're- yeah, Yes, yes, yes. Are they happy about it? No, they, they acknowledge the problem. Okay. And the challenge, yeah. And, and that is time. So just to recap, we are in a, the context of a governmental organization with some form of data transformation availability project. It sounds like our initial purpose and an outcome that we're sort of handling in this brief is really just the sort of setup of this project and the getting to know each other of, of these people. Yep. Um, in terms of participants, we've got a small team of four people from two different departments representing two different stakeholders, and the initial setup or particulars is going to be a weekly meeting, um, and then uh, the frequency will sort of be to be decided, and at, at present, no particular deadline with regards to the larger outcomes of this project. So, um, 
What I will do, uh, Brigitte, is invite you to, like I said, to mute yourself and turn off your webcam, but importantly, listen while yeah, we yeah, have yeah. a conversation about your situation. So that's the design brief. And my question to everybody is what liberating structures in particular come to mind that might help us with this initial phase of getting started and um, uh, getting to know each other? Uh, I, I would like to, I, I, I didn't really understand, uh, understand the same thing as you did. I, I thought that the intent was to do a roadmap. And the idea was that people were, you know, thrown, you know, they discussed things. And instead of thinking about that, they sort of like went into the details of various aspects, which were good to get to know each other, uh, but not uh, for the project which is basically a roadmap. So my first question to all you guys is, do you think the roadmap is the right thing at this stage? Um, well, I'm, I'm not quite sure that the roadmap is the right thing because my assumption based on what has been said is that this is a work around the work of the four persons specifically and them being able to kind of gel and not get into the details, but come up with a way of getting to that roadmap <laughs> bit of it. Uh -huh. So we have some ambiguity in our design brief. Is, is the phase of the project, uh, uh, are we looking to to create a roadmap? Is that the deliverable of this project? Or is, or is the roadmap just the first step of, of the delivery of the project? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I think though, um, we, can, we can think about both scenarios. Um, in terms of what might be reasonable action. I mean, it, it sounds like this might be a larger scale project and that it has very wide reaching implications. So it, as a roadmap is sort of a step along that way, those ways, um, I, I think it sounds like these nerds are gonna be talking to each other and gonna to need to figure out how they're gonna to work together to deliver whether it's a roadmap or whether it is the, the bigger thing. And so what, what are, are there any particular patterns that might be helpful to get started on this and then to deliver that roadmap, let alone do the, do the work of uh, that the roadmap sort of consists of? What comes to mind? You mean in terms of liberating structures? Totally. I mean, or whatever. I mean, but yeah, liberating structures would be super handy. Um, what about purpose to practice? Totally. You can dig that. Purpose because I, I think I think that they are at the very early stages, right? Uh, so. So why don't why don't you know we start by the beginning like um, you know Lewis Carroll would say purpose to practice mm -hmm. and since we, we may have some folks on the call that are unfamiliar with purpose to practice do you want to you want to uh, we've got raised hands do we uh, do we want to who wants to unpack purpose to practice is that what you're raising your hand for Sherry do you want to give us your your breakdown of purpose to practice. Ah, no, no, I gave an LS as an example. Eric Sherry also brought up Priz as a possible structure. Cool. So, um, so for a purpose to practice, Philip, did you want to give an explanation on purpose to practice? Who wants to talk about purpose to practice? It's not me. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll sort of go through the, uh, through the structure of that. Although I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, done it. So, I'm not, I cannot uh, bring some, um, you know, um, uh, heuristics or, or good, uh, good advice about how to go it. But the idea is basically from what I understand 
it, it, it is a way to, to get a, a, a very, um, a very structured um, way to, to get a, a plan or a project into focus. And it's, and it basically uh, comprises five elements that, and the first one is purpose. So what is it that we're doing? The second one is principles. What are the rules that we're going to obey to, to deliver on that, on that purpose? Then the third one is participants. An interesting question in that, in the case that, uh, in our case today, who, who should be included and, and possibly when? And um, the fourth is how we will organize and distribute control, which is a about governance, which is very important. And then what are we going to do? Uh, uh, in, and that you get into the more, um, the more um, how do you say, practical development. This is when you might be able to start drawing on the, the roadmap per se. So I'm not going to go because we don't have very much time. So I'm going to stop here. I hopefully that people have an idea of what the structure is about. Cool. Thank you. And then we've got also Sharia's came up. Sherry, do you want to give us some uh, uh, like a Reader's Digest version of how sort of TRIZ works and how we might apply it for this one? Sweet. So Sherry says, Triz is an exploration on what's the worst that could happen and what could possibly go wrong when you try to make a roadmap, i.e. get into the weeds. For sure. And what I might add to that is that we can we can also use it to actively think about what we could, what we could do to create that worst possible outcome. I think those are super solid recommendations. As for at the beginning of a project, defining the negative space with TRIZ is always great. But I would say is they 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 sort of fit inside to each other. So Philip laid down like the big broad art of purpose to practice. And maybe before I monopolize the rest of the time, is there any other structures that come up uh, to come to mind that we have heard of or tried or? Yeah, so I, I haven't tried all of them. So literally I just typed in to look on the menu. And because like we have said so far, I think the four people alone, they're not going to be able to kind of get to the roadmap. They're going to have to get other people on board. So I was thinking in terms of one having to kind of do initially impromptu networking for those specialist areas, because it sounds like everybody's sitting in silos. So there yeah. needs to be some impromptu networking to find out who are the SMEs that will need to kind of be heard <laughs> when you kind of get to the wider audience. So that's, that's what I was thinking in terms of doing that. And then also they, there's a quest, there's appreciative interviews, also kind of interviewing people to kind of get an idea about what will determine the success. Because it's such a big organization. I, yeah, I just don't see how the four alone without actual sponsors <laughs> from the other silos, mm. you're, you're going to get the roadmap sorted. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, thank and, you. And that and that 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 uh, triggers in me the idea of maybe open space technology, because in the end, why why not include as many people as we as, as they can possibly at the very beginning? You know, instead of trying to go uh, like the 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 road that was suggesting through sort of little 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 committee, why don't just put it out there and just like you know organize an open open space technology on the topic. I, I, the only reason why I would suggest a little committee is to get more people to do the open space kind of organizing. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I love open space, so I completely agree with that. I think it's magic when you have, uh, when you have some very important 
uh, a number of people and you can really draft a very interesting uh, and instead of tr you trying to figure out how to go about things you let the people decide and 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 propose and design and i think it can be very interesting i don't know what jeremy think about this what do you think about this jeremy mm, i think open space is dope i think there's some important work that i might want to to do on the front end to help improve the probability of the necessary people participating if i if i would start off with purpose to practice um i think that's a that's a, a good route I, I might use an expanded version of several structures like so purpose to practice is one of these sort of macro structure things like mm -hmm. you could just basically sit in a room a call with each four of oh, the four of you and just answer all of those four sort of you know brainstorm on those on those topics um, or you could do something a little bit more expanded and for each one of those sort of invitations you know all right purpose you could do a, a sort of one two or in this instance four would be your all um, for each one of those topics and that would give you a little bit more body and a little bit more organization for answering each of those prompts um or you could use a specific structure to answer each one of those topics for example nine whys is the one that you, you probably see most typically around purpose um but drawing together is also a really good strategy um a really good structure to define purpose so it, it would look like you know using just these five symbols you know i'm going to go through this rather quickly but using the five symbols of a circle for wholeness a rectangle or square for support a triangle for goal um, a spot a spiral for change and a star person to represent relationships draw what you think the purpose of this working group is um, and then each person creates their own drawing and then you would pair up and then interpret each other's drawings without any without explanation um, and then, you know, then you would explain and go, oh, well, this is what I intended and be surprised at how much extra meaning other people would interpret in your drawing. Um, uh, for uh, principles, appreciative interviews is used very frequently for uh, principles, right? So appreciative interviews tell a story about a time that went the way you want this time to go and then look at the overlap of your story and my story and then we would we would say hey these are these are probably good principles for us to follow for this time to go like those times um, around participants uh, there's there's a um, the structure that comes to mind and we are over time but i'm still going to keep going because uh, this is my call <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's kind of a joke. Um, around participants, there is a uh, structure called social network webbing that might be a good, good structure for this context. And social network webbing would invite the participants uh, to draw effectively the social graph of everyone that they think uh, should be involved in order to make this project to achieve their intended outcome of uh, purpose. And then to think especially about, okay, after we've sort of drawn the web of relationships, who are the people that we're gonna need to communicate with, uh, with one another that are not communicating with one another right now? And so to create an artifact of, of, of the, social, the social graph um, around, organization and governance and decision making um nothing comes immediately to mind um one two four all is a good go there what i what i tend to like actually for for governance is actually to use tris in that space so how are we going to organize to use tris to define the negative space of how you don't want to organize most explicitly and then when it comes to practices, what are the practices that we need to put in place in order to be successful? Um, for that, I have a, a love affair um, with uh, what I need from you, actually, is a really interesting uh, structure. And what I need from you is a bit of a big one. You would you know, think about 
you know, you could do it in the context of departments, but you could also do it in the context of individuals. So, you know, from you three, um, I'm going to need two requests per person. From you, I'm going to need this. From you, I'm going to need this type of stuff. And from you, I'm going to need these type of things. And if each person shares two requests with the other three people, you know, each person will then be left with a list of six requests that they've received from their peers, in which they can then go through and, and go, okay, yes, I can do that for you. Uh, no, I can't do that for you. Um, I, I'm not even sure what that request actually means. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, whatever would be the, uh, the, the response, I think, in the LS menu for that. Or, um, uh, or I'll try, right? You know, mm, you know, we're, I'm going to do my best, but you know, no guarantees there. So that would be a good way to come up with participants. And I love, especially after having that social graph of participants, then like developing, thinking about your like, how are you going to get all of these people to show up to an open space is actually a very worthy like initial deliverable and project that will that will require quite a lot of work just to arrange calendars, reserve time, understand the type of stuff that people are gonna find meaningful and valuable to address in order to show up to a session like that. But I think open space would be an incredible way to tackle it. Um, so that's the end of my rant. Thank you guys for coming up with such badass advice. Um, I would take this moment to invite uh, Brigitte back to tell us what she thought of our consultation and what she might be able to take away and make use of. Um, as I very frantically go, EcoCycle, you definitely, definitely, definitely use EcoCycle to create your roadmap, like hands down, just think in EcoCycle. Um, and after that frantic announcement entry, um, so. What do you think you might might be particularly useful for you in what you just heard? Well, um, I'm relative new to liberating structures. So I learned a lot of structures I've never heard of. <laughs> so I wrote a lot of them down and I'll just, um, well, go look at them. And it's a nice for me to have um, a starting point to look at what might be interesting to use instead of reading all of them. So that's really, that's what I take away anyway. Um, and yes, in answer to your discussion earlier, we are at the beginning of a, hopefully a movement that will produce good results, but we are in the very beginning. And we are one of the things, one of the questions we have is who should we involve in this big organization? So that would be one of the things for us to well, we thought we just go and try and see, and then if there are more people uh, needed, then, well, there's always a surprise in our organization. So there will be surprises. Um, so I'm really happy. Yeah. I'll just cool. have to learn and I can, I can, uh, the purpose to practice sounds very interesting, but I think like you did, just start with one element of it and work that out instead of putting the whole structure in one meeting. I know, but you, uh, by the way, it's not recommended that you do, you do, you try everything immediately. No, 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 but it's really nice um, to know what are the interesting structures to, to uh, read and see what I can use of it. Yeah, yeah the, 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 you know, the purpose to practice is, is a process. Yeah. And then you can you can you can use it, yeah, in in ways that suits your your purpose basically. Yeah, for sure. I think especially that question around the social graph seems relevant. And um, in the chat, I put a link to a document. I'm gonna briefly share the screen, and we're gonna go through the eco cycle right quick. Um, once I figure out where the button is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, the big bright green one right in my face. Yeah. Okay. Cause I've, I've used zoom before I swear. Um, 
so eco cycle the question that we started with uh Brigitte, in the yeah. the top of the the session in impromptu networking was actually a, i sort of lifted from this pattern that is eco cycle and so what i asked was what are the things or that are in the regeneration or gestation or seed phase as you see here in the visual and then what you would basically do is use the use the whole pattern to sort of plan out your roadmap but instead of thinking in what you might be tempted to do of a strictly linear start to finish but to think about like as you come to the end of the first phase of your project rec with recognition that 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 end of that phase is actually the beginning of the next phase of the of moving from again the next seed that you guys plant into the birth of that thing, um, and then thinking about especially what's probable. So birth being early stage after you've put some thought and time and energy into it, but you're not quite there yet. You don't have anything about that uh, um, uh, viable to sort of like show as finished project product maturity having something that is sort of uh valuable to the outside world and might you might describe as quite finished and creative destruction thinking about the 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 negative space especially of what you might have to stop doing in order to make space for whatever you guys want to bring into actual into actualization and then uh, paying special attention to what you might find uh, to expect to find in the scarcity traps, like what are going to be the challenges. If I think about, let's just run with this idea of open space. If you guys could do all the work you could of of mapping out the stakeholder environment exquisitely and proposing an open space as a way to actually deliver on this roadmap what would be the the scarcity issues that you might run into that would prevent you from investing addition the necessary time and resources to even organize create and get people to show up for that open space you know and similarly the the chasm between birth and and maturity what might be the things that you know after all of your great preparation might prevent you you sort of create a failure to launch situation that don't enable you to actually reach your mature, you know, well-polished deliverables. And then after, after maturity, you know, what might be the patterns that you could get, that you and the organization might get stuck in um, that you, that are hard to stop in order to make space for creative destruction and release new and en new energy into this uh, into this new batch of regeneration. So EcoCycle is a particularly powerful tool to not only think about the projects going forward, but also to reflect on how things are going. You know, if you were to take the portfolio of activities of just the way things are right now and to map it to this eco cycle, it might be very telling for what you, what type of things you find in these traps and what type of strategies you guys might discover to address them. Sherry's got a raised hand. What's up? What is the V phase? Ah, yeah. So I was feeling clever and I put, yeah, and that is the chasm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, thanks for that. Uh, yeah. Um, perhaps uh, my uh, I have feelings about whether it's so clever with that question. But thank you <laughs> for the feedback, Terry. So that's the eco cycle. That's another uh, particularly interesting strategy. It's great for so many, so many, so many things. Now that I've blathered for a near eternity, does anybody have another design brief for us to work on? A situation, a question, a challenge. Well, in keeping with the open space, 
whenever it's over, it might be over. Um, could be one of the things we, we expand on in addition, uh, considering we, we mentioned open space, but open space is a, has got a lots of moving parts. Clarification, the difference between the scarcity trap and the chasm. Hmm. Just a minute, buddy. I know you want mama. So the scarcity. Uh, yeah. No, you can definitely not watch television. I love you so much. Go play with your Legos or draw or you finished your boat. Check it out. That's a stone boat. In Santa Claus. Um, Hij is niet af. Hij is nog niet af. All right. Dit telt je er nog bij. Yeah, I know. I'll help you in a second. Um, so the scarcity trap has to do with, especially if you think about like a great new idea that you have, and then you think about like all the time and energy that you'll typically need to invest in that brilliant, shiny, perhaps world-changing idea. And if you think about how often you just, I mean, after all of the things that you have to do to lead your life and all of the work that it's going to take to put this, bring this new shiny idea out into the world, like how often do we have great new ideas that just sort of sit in you know what where do you put your ideas i put mine in a google keep document like all of my great startup ideas you know like yeah my wife likes to say that she you know, netflix was one of her great startup ideas but of course just stayed in her scarcity trap for for a little too long and then oh surprise somebody makes netflix right so that's kind of the definition of the scarcity trap the chasm though has to do with like just that that differentiation say she would have like taken it seriously and done like all of the requisite initial information isaiah stop please stop please come inside you can draw you can play with your legos but please do not sit out on the balcony and holler mama at, at the whole neighborhood it will drive me crazy and i am being recorded so uh, um, the chasm has to do with like the the different that spread like the best metaphor I can describe to describe the chasm either has to do with product development like if you think about that implementation of of creating a new thing and actually finding your sort of product market fit like you know you've you've done you you have something that's sort of there but you can't quite find the people who need it. And it's hard to get it in front of the, front of the people who, who might want it. Um, or another interesting metaphor is the metaphor of a man child, right? You know, it's, you know, someone who presents as a, you know, fully grown uh, male adult, but still like wears pop collars and like behaves more or less you know, standing out on the balcony going, ma, 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 right? And just doesn't have uh, much ability to self-reflect or, or other childish type of behavior. So you can see that while there has been a lot of energy that's sort of gone into these things already, they're not quite there. There's some extra bit of juice uh, that, that can sort of prevent things from being, from moving from birth to maturity. And I made it up. So it's not actually on the eco cycle if you look at the Liberating Structures website. So if you find that it doesn't land super well for you, don't, don't just use the visual that comes from the website and ignore my ramblings. So that is, maybe the distinction between the chasm and the scarcity trap. Well, one way to, to think about the, 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 the trap, the, 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 the chasm may be in um, reference to the um, adoption curve. 
and 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 I don't know if people are familiar with that uh, with that model. Um, uh, and and it, it is very interesting that so there, there is going to be a moment. It, it has to do, if you want, with um, what can we say that would make uh, general sense? It, it has to do with basically formalization. So let's say that as things are, are, are going up the echo cycle, you're still in the prototype mode. You know, you're still trying to figure out some of the details. And then you have you come up with the first, let's say, MPV, you know, the first your first product, your first service, you and then you're gonna test that. And then it, it is like, how do you take this into a full-fledged industrial solution? And and that is that would be the maturity thing, because the maturity thing will allow you to get whatever your the the uh, <clears throat> the benefits you wanted to get from whatever you did. So for me, it's going from 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 a, a, a prototyping mindset towards more of a finished product or finish something mindset or or actually an actual thing. Awesome. And Christina, did you maybe want to unpack and tell us a little bit more about the about the open space technology? Um, not exactly. Apart from that, it's also. Put so your own blast. Oh, yeah. Welcome, no. welcome to the Wise Crowds Design Call. Your first no time. Problem. Put you I on blast it's... for the what big <laughs> stuff they do. Right? No, it's bad because like I've been to. I was at the bioregional one, which is an open space <laughs> summit, and that was like two weeks ago. But I mean, what I love about open space, it's that everybody coming to the area and, you know, you have the opening session of what do you want to talk about and you kind of go through and people show up, they can be the bees or butterflies that move around. But for me, open space and what it adds to it, it's that it's all of the different sites or everybody coming together and forming this whole. And that whole together decides what are the important discussion points. So yeah, it would be ideal for the scenario if you're in such a huge organization with so many silos to get everybody interacting and having knowledge of what, let's say these different, you know, the special, not, not hoarders, but the people who have their perfect little silos that they sit in they will can share it at an open space event. And those are the those are the rules of open space. Totally. So we've got lots of information in there. So an open open space technology. Um, thank you, Christina, uh, you know, for sharing your enthusiasm. Um, open space technology is pretty badass. Um, it, it revolves around the creation of an artifact that allows people to self-organize uh, an agenda. And you would do that by sort of defining the time, the time, the increments of time. So let's just say, for example, you were able to organize a four hour open space. So you would figure out, you know, how do we want to divide time up for those four hours? Should we do sessions of 30 minutes? Or should we have four, four blocks of one hour? Let's just say that you decide to do four blocks of one hour each. And so you would have four of these sort of columns or rows for time. I, I hate this visual actually, now that I think about it, because I always like to put time on the, on the, the horizontal axis. Um, and it, it, this here shows time going down, but you know, you would one space for one, one column row, one axis, there we go one axis for uh, time, and then you would think about the spaces. So if you were to do this, for example, in a physical place, like how many different rooms, meeting rooms or conference centers, like what are the different spaces that other people, that people could meet within those time bounds of one hour chunks? So 
you know, let's say if you had 50 people, it might be a very, a very good idea to have, you know, between four and six different spaces that these people could group up into different conversations. And so if you had, say, six different spaces and four different blocks of time, that would create 24 different distinct chunks of space and time and then you would literally just invite the people to go and go hey what is the stuff that you're interested to talk about that you think needs to be explored during these this four hours um, and you would ask them to just sort of brainstorm that stuff and then what you would do is you would invite them to come give a brief presentation and say hey in one minute who are you and what's the topic that you want to talk about and so everybody who has wants to raise a topic would go, you know, my name's Jeremy, I want to talk about this. I think this is really, really, really important. Uh, the surprising power of liberating structures. Now we can use them to, to handle this project. And then typically what you do is you allow everybody to go, sort of present their topic. And then you would go back through the list of presenters and go, okay, so who's interested in uh, attending Jeremy's topic? And then everybody who's interested in attending my thing would raise their hand so that we could see in the room about how many people are interested in that topic. Because some spaces that you have might be more suitable for smaller groups, some might be suitable for larger groups. And then you would, you would then uh, take the go take that second round and you would start placing those topics inside each of those six cells. And that would also enable like the people that are interested in that topic to also self-organize the time spots, right? Oh no, I want to go to both topic A and topic B. So I need to make sure those are separated in time because these are very important for me. And what we do is we use sort of four principles and one rule to organize the vibe. So first things first, um, you know, whenever it happens is the right time whoever comes is the right people whatever happens is the only thing that could have happened and you know whenever it's over it's over and so that sort of uh, sets the tone for the space with this idea of the law of two feet which is if you're not contributing to a on a session if you're not learning something from based on the, the room that you're in feel free to move and what you notice is that some people move a lot around a whole lot. They bounce from room to room to room. Some people make very specific uh, uh, connections from one room to another room. And some people don't do anything. I'm a butterfly, for example. I never go to sessions during open spaces. Um, and that actually has a very functional role in the context of open space. What's up, Christina? Hi there, just a quick question for you um, because I was looking at the when it's over, it's over section. Uh -huh. And I know that in terms of the open space ones that I've been to, they usually, they kind of pr produce like scribes, you know, from the different sessions. And they also have like a book of proceeding that follows afterwards. I was just wondering in terms of, in terms of in Brigitte's case, how exactly does that kind of translate to the the next steps afterwards if, if you get what i'm saying because you know like the the takeaway actions from like the open space event throwing it out there for anybody who might have had that experience after the open sure. space so if your work is, so i think what you're you're pointing at is if you have if you're going to use this idea of open space this way of organizing time and attention but you have a specific thing that you want to deliver how do you sort of like bridge the gap between what feels like loosey goosey hippy dippy chaos um to like the hard requirements of getting shit done um what, what i would say is yes add in additional uh, tooling as you might find requirement, right? Um, for that purpose, thinking about documentarians is very is 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 great. You know, inviting every room to have some, to elect somebody to to play the role of scribe. Um, thinking about how you might organize time within those spaces is also a great idea. So 
for example, in the deliberating structures community, we, we tend to lean into what we call option space, which is at the beginning of every open space session, we usually do have a brief conversation or you know, time permitting a round of one, two, four all to think about what structures we wanna use within the time constraints of that individual session. Um, to help additionally organize our time and attention and, and energy together. So um, thinking about how you might want to document that thing or sort of keeping an eye and an and, and outcome that you want people to sort of move towards, making that explicit at the outset of this thing would be a great idea. Boom, shaka laka laka. And as a matter of fact, there's a... There's a TED talk from one of like the OGs in the open space community um, where he talks about, I think, dancing with Shiva, where he, he mentions that uh, they, they developed an, an Olympic pavilion for like the 2000 Olympics in the course of like three weeks, which was unheard of at the time. They'd spent like a year and a half like developing the design for the Olympic pavilion, but they used open space technology to make a new design for an opportunity that had arisen within three weeks, um, which is a hell of a lot better than the, the old year and a half. Um, I Google it, like YouTube, this is your friend. So that's a lot of me rambling, much more than uh, I would say is normal um, for this call, um, but, uh, thank you guys for your time, attention, and energy. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, Brigitte, if you want to come back and let us know which of these structures you were able to use and you know, bring your learning back from that implementation into the space, that would be super awesome. We would greatly appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you guys in a future session. Thank you, Jeremy. My pleasure. Uh, just, gonna... Jeremy, yep. a question. What's sure. the name of the TED Talk? Or like TED Talk is called Dancing with Shiva? Uh yeah, we can do we can do this thing together. Let's let's try it. I can I can definitely find it. Oh my god. I opened YouTube and it was a video of this call. It's just playing in the background. Um freaked me out. Uh Open space, Ted. Uh, uh, yep, Dancing with Shiva. Here, I got it. I'll drop a link into the chat and you can check it out. Boom, shaka laka laka. It is a video for those of you on YouTube, that's kind of weird, with uh, Harrison Owen at TEDx Navisink. Owen from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Lego. No, not Owen from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Lego. Um, well, guys, that's been the Wise Crowds Liberating Structures Design Call. Thanks for your time, attention, and energy. I'll see you around. Cheers. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Kisses.